All right, so lots of different reports on Bill Belichick's contract status. We'll get to all of those reports and my thoughts on them. First, I remind you, Cattles on Causeway coming up tomorrow night, Wednesday night, live post-game podcast following the Celtics-Knicks opener. You want to check it out, swing on by the YouTube page. We'll be doing things live tomorrow night. So back and forth between you and I, your thoughts, your questions, all of those things. Cattles on Causeway, live post-game podcast following the Celtics opener tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden. Don't forget to rate and review if you're listening to us on Spotify and Apple Pods. And if you're watching slash listening on YouTube, we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the month. Click that subscription button. That helps an awful lot. Also, don't forget to give us that thumbs up. That does as well. Every little thing helps this community, including your comments. All right, so the Bill Belichick stuff. What the hell to make of all of this? Let's kind of recap quickly everything that's been said as far as what I've heard or read. Sunday morning, you had Ian Rappaport on the NFL Network say that Bill Belichick got a lucrative multi-year deal. Tom Curran pushed back on that idea, not as far as the lucrative. We all know that Bill Belichick makes a ton of money. Some will tell you he makes upwards of $25 million per year. So that's not debatable. But Curran, he pushed back on the multi-year agreement. Curran, writing yesterday, NBC Sports Boston wrote the following, in trying to confirm the report, sources indicated Belichick's contract expires after the 2024 season, which doesn't seem to fit the definition of, quote-unquote, locked up long-term. So Ian Rappaport says multiple years. Curran comes back and says Bill's contract does not extend beyond 2024. Curran also reminded us that in 2020, Rappaport, said the Patriots were willing to go in excess of $30 million a year for Tom Brady. They did not want to go past $22.5 million per year for Tom Brady. Kern also reminded us during his Pats podcast with Phil Perry that the Brady deal in 2019 was reported as a two-year deal at the time, but in reality, it was a one-year deal with an option. So there has been some history here as far as not quite getting all the details correct. Rappaport responded to Curran. (laughs) Rappaport, yesterday on the NFL Network, clarified his comments on the Belichick contract and said that he is contracted for the next several years. So Rappaport says multiple years. Curran says doesn't go beyond 2024. Rappaport counters and says the next several years. Belichick has a contract. Then we have former WEEI personality and Nesson personality Dale Arnold post on X last night. And he says that sources tell me that Belichick contract is a three-year extension that also addresses the potential end of tenure. Although that could be looked at again in the future, specific job descriptions were also reportedly laid out. What we have, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, is a source off. Ian Rappaport's sources, Tom Curran's sources, Dale Arnold's sources, maybe they're All the same source. Doesn't seem like Curran has the same sources as Arnold and Rappaport. Maybe Arnold and Rappaport have similar sources. It's a source off. It is a source off through and through. So we don't know what's going on. We have no idea because the reports are so different in their nature. We don't have a clear idea as to what's going on. What I will say is. If we look at the details and how the contract is described by each person, if it's a three-year deal, if Belichick was not walking into a lame duck season this year, right? If, if he had 2023 and if he had 2024 on the contract, then a three-year contract brings you well into the future. Because if this was not going to be his final season, and he had 2024 on the contract, a three-year deal would be what, 25, 26, 27? That's hard to believe. I can't imagine that's the case. That would lead you through 2026, 2027. Now, if you ripped up the contract, if you ripped up the deal before you headed into 2023 because Belichick was set to be a lame duck coach, and Robert Kraft said, hey, I'm not going to allow you to be a lame duck coach and it was disrespectful to Kraft, and he didn't want the unknowns and all of that, maybe he goes to Belichick and they rip up the one year left on Belichick's deal, 
So no longer is it 2023. It's a three-year deal for 2023, 2024, and 2025. Okay, that's one possibility. Tom Curran is telling us that this does not go beyond 2024. So there's no world where Curran comes from that this is a three-year deal. Could be a two-year deal ripping up the contract because he was walking into this lame duck season if that was the case. And you'd have 2023 and 2024. That's a possibility. It's really the only possibility unless Curran says they're tacking on a year and they added 2024 to the contract. Ian Rappaport's kind of all over the place. Multi-years, several years. Is it up in 2025? Is it up in 2026? It could technically be up in 2024, but Rappaport pushed back on that. So it seems like Rappaport and Dale Arnold are pushing us towards 2025 and Tom Curran is pushing us towards 2024. And my friend Greg Bedard also last night on Boston Sports Tonight said that from what he understands, this would not be something that links the two together beyond 2024. So, you know, the local guys that are covering this team every single day say this is not going beyond 2024. Dale Arnold, who is local but has not been obviously following the team every single day, says it's a three-year deal, which could lead us well beyond 2024. And Rappaport is Rappaport. So is it through 25? Is it through 24? Who the hell knows? Who knows? Th those are the possibilities. But, but here's my overall thought process on what's going on here. Number one, I do not believe Bill Belichick would walk into a lame duck season. Whether you or I believe he should have walked into a lame duck season, that doesn't matter. Belichick's not going to do that. Belichick does have the track record to say, hey, look, you know, back in 2021, we made the playoffs. Last year, I screwed up. Matt Patricia, Joe Judge was a mistake. Let me correct those mistakes. Let's tack on another year to the contract. That, to me, would be reasonable. It'd be a reasonable ask from Belichick. Look at what I've done over the last several years. Look at what I did for two decades, the six Super Bowls, all of that. I did make the playoffs just two years ago. And Robert, I made a mistake last year. Let me correct that mistake. And let's tack on another year, 2024, so I don't have to walk in and be a lame duck coach because if anybody finds that out, then I'm screwed. I'm not going to get buy-in from the team. And that's not really how Kraft runs business. Right. So he, he's always kind of looking ahead with Belichick and trying to map out the next couple of years versus we're going to put everything on this season contractually. Even Brady, they had that, again, option in, in a two year deal structure, which was really a one year deal. But they still left that option on the back end. So I think Belichick. From his point of view, and you could certainly understand it, again, it doesn't matter. I'll get into you know what this means and, and whether or not it was malpracticed by Robert Kraft. But from Belichick's point of view, you understand it. If you're Bill Belichick, you've done what you've done. You were in the playoffs just back in 2021 with a rookie quarterback, and you're not going to walk into a lame duck season. You want the leverage. You want the security, and you're going to use that to your advantage. So I totally understand that from Je Belichick's point of view. I also don't think Belichick's going to walk into the lame duck year because of the Don Shula record. Everybody knows that Belichick is chasing Shula. Belichick knows it. Kraft knows it. We all know it. The American people know it, that he is chasing Shula's record. And I believe that Kraft, in a perfect world, would love Belichick to break that record as the Patriots head coach. It's a gravitas kind of thing for the organization. And you saw the, the Patriots Hall of Fame induction ceremony on Saturday, that stuff means something to Kraft. He believes it, it brings legitimacy and credibility to the franchise. And Belichick was not going to break that record in 2023. It wasn't going to happen. So, so it makes sense that they would not want to walk into 2023 with one year left on Belichick's contract. If it was 2023 and it was a lame duck year, Again, a lot of these reports, you can rip up that last year and you could tack on a couple of years to get Belichick through 2024 and maybe even 2025. If this contract, if this extension extended Belichick 
you know, through 2025 with no contractual outs, it's malpractice by Robert Kraft. If you gave Belichick autonomy, if you gave him the latitude to run the program through 2025 without any ability to escape from that contract, you screwed up. That's a bad move by Kraft. Unequivocally, it's a bad move. And for people who want to push back and say the six Super Bowls, I just mentioned those. I appreciate and respect what Belichick did and has done for this organization. I think you'd be crazy to not say thank you and to respect and appreciate what he has done. However, this is a what have you done for me lately kind of business. Even Belichick would tell you, you don't pay for past performance. You don't pay for past performance for players. You shouldn't do it for coaches. You shouldn't do it for GMs. What's the recent history? That's what Robert Kraft should be looking at. And if this deal extends Belichick through 2025 with no outs, that to me is a dereliction of duty from your owner. And it's a huge swing and a miss, a gigantic swing and a miss. And I have no idea why you would do that. Forget about 2018 and, and forget about 2004. Those things, when you're talking about this contract extension, they don't matter. From 30,000 feet in totality, they certainly matter to the organization. They should matter to fans. It was a glorious dynasty. But when you're hammering out an extension for the future of this organization, you have to look at what's happened recently. And if Kraft sat down this past offseason and looked at Bill Belichick leading a team that had been 25 and 26 the prior three years, how can you give that guy a contract extension beyond 2024? How can you do it? Again, I think it's malpractice. What is the statute of limitations? Will you just continue to pay Belichick until 2030 because of what he did in 2018? That's insanity. And yes, that's some hyperbole, but you get the point. At, at, at some juncture, you've got to cut the cord. You have to say it is what it is, and what I see is what I see, and I can't get wrapped up in the romanticism of 10 years ago. You know, 25 and 26 heading into this year in the prior three years for this coach and for this GM. The Patricia and Joe Judge decision alone should make you have second thoughts. So again, we don't know what the details are. We've been given multiple reports and they're all over the place. All I can tell you is if this contract pushes Belichick to 2025 and there are no contract outs and there's no funny money with guaranteed and all that, then that's a mess and it's a terrible decision. Even if they turn things around this year, because at the time you did not know that you were going to turn things around in 2023. And I don't believe 25 and 26 in the prior three years in the Matt Patricia Joe Judge decision, I don't believe that would lead you to give Belichick the benefit of the doubt and just say, yeah, well, I just believe they're going to get to the playoffs because this is Bill Belichick. I don't think you should give him that kind of leeway heading into this season. So even if he turns thing, things around this year, to me, it's still malpractice by Kraft because you're making this decision last offseason. You're making this decision off what you had seen in the prior three years, not what you believe is going to happen this year because if you believe this year was going to be 10-11 wins and you're a playoff team, that is just hope. And you don't hand out contract extensions off of hope because once you do that, you lose. You lose the future of an organization. Can't base it on hope. Can't do it. So the coach, Bill Belichick, 25 and 26, Patricia Judge decision and, and, and what he's done with the staff, not having a clear follow-up plan for certain situations. And then you look at GM Belichick, and we've been going through this for the last couple of months, just based off of how he handled the quarterback position going back to Brady has been bad enough to not just hand him an extension beyond 2024. I mean, just think about it. He shorted Tom Brady. Brady walks. His plan after Brady was Jarrett freaking Stidham. They pick up Cam Newton off the trash heap. I mean, that, that was the plan for quarterback in 2020. The plan was to go into that season with Jarrett Stidham as your starting quarterback. 
That was the thought process. Or, or maybe a, a ham and egg or like a Brian Hoyer. And then you pick up Cam because Cam is out there and nobody else wants Cam. So you pick up Cam and you have what you have in 2020. Then you draft Mac Jones. And I'm not going to go through all the details because we've talked about it ad nauseum on this pod, but you handle Mac's contract just completely wrong. When you have a quarterback on his rookie scale contract, that's when you spend money on offense. And that's not what Belichick has done the last few years. You spent a ton of money in 2021. And you pretty much end up with like a B minus grade after spending all of that money. You brought in John o. Smith, couldn't figure out how to handle him. He's now in Atlanta playing better. You brought in Nelson Aguilar, that was a disaster. Judon was good, obviously. It's a good move. Hunter Henry, you could say it was a good move. Devon Gotchow, good move. But you weren't great in that offseason with your de decisions and evaluations. And we've been through the wide receiver position. So I just, I don't know how you could sit down if you're Robert Kraft this past offseason and hand Bill Belichick, post Brady Belichick, I don't know how you could just give him an extension that goes into 2025. That's irresponsible as an owner. All right, I have more thoughts on this. What do I think is actually going on? What do I think actually happened this past offseason? I'll give you that answer in a minute. But I remind you, Cattles on Causeway tomorrow night, live post-game podcast following Celtics Knicks. Jump on the YouTube page, and we will be all over it tomorrow night following that game. Interaction, back and forth, the live post-game pod. Uh, we can take your questions, your thoughts, your statements, your declarations for the season. That's happening tomorrow night. And if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Pods, rate and review. And if you're watching, listening on YouTube, we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers. Hit that subscription button for us. It means an awful lot. Give us a thumb up. Give us a like. That also means an awful lot. And comment. I love reading your comments and going back and forth. That's a lot of fun as well. So I appreciate all of your support. All right, so what do I think is the most likely story here? What, what likely played out? I think first and foremost, there's options involved. I would have to imagine that there was an option or two involved, and that opened the door for Belichick to renegotiate. I do not believe Belichick or Kraft would allow Belichick to walk into this season as a lame duck. He had to have some protection. At least that's what I believe. Now, if he didn't have that protection and he was looking at a lame duck year, then that brings a whole different scenario. But I'm just going to look at this and tell you what I believe. I believe Belichick had one more guaranteed year left on his deal. I believe he had an option that was a part of this contract, okay? And because of that, it opened the window for Belichick to go to Kraft and have a conversation. It opened the door to have a renegotiation. And I believe that Belichick ends up signing a multi-year deal that is a two-year deal. I think they ripped up the contract. Belichick got a new deal for 2023 and 2024. And here's the kicker about the three-year deal in the several years from Arnold and Rappaport, respectively. I think when you talk about three years and multi-year and, and several years, I think that's also option-related. I think what we have is Belichick signing a contract this past offseason that kept him here in 2023, kept him here in 2024, and had an option year for 2025. Very similar to Brady and his quote-unquote two-year deal when it was really a one-year deal. I think this three-year deal or several years, I think it's actually a two-year deal that was renegotiated with an option year tacked on. Just in case Belichick did turn this thing around, just in case Belichick did want to stay beyond 2024, there's an option for either side to stay or get out of this thing. That's what I believe. Again, the, 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 no inside knowledge or anything. Putting the pieces together, and I'll dive deeper into it in a minute, putting the pieces together, that's what I believe happened. I believe there was a contract conversation this last offseason. I believe Kraft 
had some leverage because of what we talked about, the 25 and 26 record the prior three years, the Patricia and Judge decision, the way that the quarterback was handled in, in the personnel decisions and the drafts over the last few years. Kraft had leverage, and with that leverage, Kraft kept the option open for 2025, but ripped up the deal and gave Bill 2023 and 2024. I also believe, because Kraft had leverage, that Kraft likely has outs within this contract. I do believe Tom Curran. I think Curran is really good at what he does. I think he has very solid sources within that organization. Tom's been following this team for a very long time. He's been writing about them and talking to people for a very long time, decades. And I, I think Tom has credibility when it comes to getting information from certain people. So Tom saying this doesn't go beyond 2024, I believe him. I believe 2025 is an option. And I believe that there's some wiggle room here with some outs. There's a way to report this contract to make it look very, very Belichick, you know, very, very pro-Belichick. So that's what I think. Now, why would Robert Kraft do that? Number one, again, I think the Shula record does matter to Kraft. The 20-plus years does matter to Kraft. The money that Belichick has made for Kraft by the value of this organization matters to Kraft. But I also think that Robert Kraft loves Gerard Mayo. And I believe that Kraft wants Mayo to be the next guy. And we all read what happened during this past offseason while this contract negotiation was reportedly happening with Belichick. There was a contract negotiation happening with Mayo. And I think Kraft wants Mayo. Mayo turned down those head coaching interviews. You don't do that unless you have some kind of assurance from ownership, no matter what they say at the time. Mayo is signed through 2024 from what we know and what's been reported, which aligns with Belichick being signed through 2024. Again, the 2025 would be an option. So the contract aligns with Belichick's. And I think Kraft looks at Mayo and says, I want him to be the guy but I'm not sure he's ready to be the guy just yet. And instead of throwing everything up in the air, what do you do, right? You don't want to give Mayo this shot too early in the middle of a disastrous situation. You want to give him time to kind of figure everything out and you want a smooth transition because it gives Mayo the best chance to succeed if he is going to be the guy. So I think Kraft looked at Mayo and said, he's our guy, but he's our guy likely two years from now. I believe that was you know, discussed with Mayo. I believe that was discussed with Belichick. I believe they all got into a room and said, this is how we want to handle it. This is how we want to move forward. And Kraft gave himself two years to decide and two years to complete this transition with Belichick and Mayo. And Belichick, why would he sign? Because he is given the window to get through 2024 and be able to take that Shula record for his own and be able to say that he accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish. Beat the Shula record, won X amount of Super Bowls, yada, yada. And giving Belichick the extra year next year gives him the opportunity to beat that record. So Kraft gets some more wiggle room with Mayo. He he earns the opportunity here with this contract negotiation to keep Mayo as the guy in the future. He also takes care of Belichick, some, something that he cares about, and keeps Belichick kind of engaged and keeps the team engaged because he's not a lame duck coach. He does have, I, I think, some insurance. He He does have some protection with that deal, so he's not going to get burnt years beyond this. And, and, and Belichick, he gets two years to beat Shula's record to make sure this program is in good hands. And then he could hand it off to Mayo. So Belichick gets what he wants. Kraft gets what he wants. And Mayo, Mayo gets assurances that he can be the next guy. He gets a pay bump for sure. He gets more experience. They bring him into the room with interviews and the draft and all of that stuff. So he has a better resume and he's more prepared to be the next head coach. Remember, Mayo's a CEO type 
People that know him will tell you that. So this gives Mayo extra time to figure out other aspects of a head coaching job that he has never had the opportunity to figure out and be a part of. And so Mayo now is set. And, and if Belichick turns things around and wants to stay, well, then Mayo, his contract is up in 2024. He can move to the next team. And if Belichick wants to stay for one more year, then Kraft has the opportunity to pick up that option and maybe tack on another option just so you don't have to be stuck with that lame duck situation. So Belichick gets what he wants, Kraft gets what he wants, and Mayo gets what he wants. It, it makes sense from that standpoint. Again, if we're talking about 2024 with a 25 option, if it goes into 25 and there's no protections and all of that, it's madness. I mean, at the time, Kraft loves Mayo. He thinks Mayo's the future, says he's not quite ready, but we have Mayo locked down. We have Matt Grow locked down. And let's smoothly transition to Mayo and Grow and give Bill the respect that he deserves. I would have to imagine that was Kraft's approach to this contract negotiation. Mayo, Belichick, Kraft, I believe we're all in on this. And the ultimate question that was asked was, how can we move forward, be happy, and do what's right for the organization? And to me, giving Belichick that two years with some outs to get Mayo prepared, to me, that makes sense. And I wouldn't go crazy over that. But if we're talking beyond that with no protections, again, I would go crazy over that. I, I would think that's madness. Now, if it's a bad year, would Kraft cut the cord? I believe so. If this ends up being a five-win season, I think Kraft cuts the cord. I think that there's likely outs in 2024. You don't have to worry about the option. That thing's just tacked on. I have to believe that Kraft seeing the three years prior to this negotiation, the Patricia decision, the judge decision, I have to believe that Kraft gave himself some outs. He gave himself some options. Have to believe that. And so, yeah, I think if this season goes badly, if we see this team stink on Sunday against Miami and then they kind of limp into the bye and they end up winning six games, I could see Kraft pulling the trigger and cutting the cord completely and saying, we're going to move on. We are going to move on, Bill. I gave you the renegotiation. I gave you a chance in 2023 to figure things out. You would have been set for 2024. I gave you the benefit of the doubt. You had the opportunity to take advantage, and you failed. And this team was a failure, and we can't go on like this. And then I think Kraft would have to expedite the Mayo process if that's what he wants to do. And then Mayo is his guy going forward. But I think Kraft would cut the cord. And I think that not just because of my own thought process, but let's not forget Jeff Howe's report that we talked about. You can check it on the pod from a couple of weeks ago. Jeff Howe's report in The Athletic was just a couple of weeks ago. That was months after this negotiation was done. So. Why in the world would Jeff Howe be told by people close to the situation that Kraft would not hesitate to say goodbye to Belichick? If this contract was $25 million guaranteed for the next three years, if there were no options and no outs, would that story come out? And I understand that Kraft has played some lip service to fans before. That, that's obvious. It's on the record. However, that would put Kraft in a really tough bind, that report from Howe. Because now you've opened the door wide to say Belichick is gone if he fails this year. And that report comes out well after this deal was hammered out between Kraft and Belichick. I think that that story from Jeff Howe was a warning shot to Bill Belichick saying, hey, look, we understand we renegotiated your deal. We negotiated a new contract with you this offseason, but that's not going to give you carte blanche. You're still on the ticky-tocky. You're on the clock, baby, and we're watching. 
That was the point of that story from Jeff Howe. I think this is some pushback from the Belichick side, whether it's trying to get some buy-in from the players because there's been a lot of talk about him being gone. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it could be from the Crafts trying to save a lost season and, and trying to make the fan base kind of settle down, but that wouldn't make any sense to me because of the Howe report. So I believe this came from Belichick's side. Was it because Belichick's going to play hardball with the Crafts when it comes to getting out of this contract? Could be. Was it a message to his team? Could be. But I don't think we forget that Howe report. It means an awful lot. The comments that Kraft has made over the past couple of years. So I would have to imagine if this continues to go the way it's gone this year, that Belichick is still gone. There's going to be a buyout of the contract. And then you look at Gerard Mayo and Matt Groh, and you make a decision if you're Kraft, if you want to stand by those guys and move forward. So those are my thoughts. Uh, there's another big thought that I have from the Dale Arnold post that I'll get to. Uh, I'll get to that uh, during tomorrow's podcast because I, I think it's a very critical piece of information that we got from that Dale Arnold post. But I'll wait on that until tomorrow. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, Cattles on Causeway, live postgame podcast following Knicks and Celtics. Also rate and review on Apple Pods and Spotify. And here on YouTube, we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this month. We're just over 100 short of that. All of your support means an awful lot to me. It's a one-man band making this thing happen. Like, comment, subscribe, all of those things help. Until tomorrow, unless the Red Sox hire a GM or something else crazy happens, it's the Nick Cattle Show.